Welcome to live stream number 31, life's stream, life's dream, life stream number 31, one note, one arm, one can, and now Corky will be doing one boat.
there's no shore We're all in
crawl in one There you go. Wow. So, it's story time. <laughs> I got so excited, so excited last time about story time. <laughs> I'm even more excited. Woohoo! <laughs> this time. I'm more excited. My shoes are going in the air. I'm hiding. I'm showing up. I'm, I'm, I'm hiding. Oh, what do I do? I'm, it's story time. Does everyone realize this is story time? Maybe you're beginning to catch on. I'm living with a madman. <laughs> one note, one arm, one can. And Come over to Story Couch. One boat. One boat. <laughs> and one boat. Ah! Yeah, that was a slogan. We're working on the slogan. Holly and I, it's called... Do not not vote. Don't be a double negative. <laughs> We're working on that one. So, ah, should catch my breath. Have some water. Could you drink water and get plenty of sleep? And how y'all doing this morning? Do you have your coffee? Hello to the Goldsteins, to Sandy, Karen, um, all of our friends out there. I've had my coffee. Can you tell? <laughs> Lynn Jordan. Hi, Lynn. Lenny. We love you, Lynn. Audacious Diva. Uh, <laughs> Skip Haynes from Ali Odo Haynes, Jeremiah. The late Skip Haynes. He called me one day and he said, Hey, Cork, we're going to put the band back together. It's going to be Ali Odo Haynes, Jeremiah band, but... Al Alioto is not going to join the band this time. So it's going to be me and Jeremiah, and we're trying to figure out what to call the band so that we don't just go into oblivion because everyone's used to the name Alioto Haynes Jeremiah. And so he said, we're thinking maybe calling it Lakeshore Drive because Lakeshore Drive was one of their hit songs. So, or should we just call it Haynes and Jeremiah, or what should we do? And I said, you guys, there's an obvious name for your new band. Now it's just Jeremiah, and it's just Skip Haynes, right? Just all, it's Haynes and Jeremiah. Yes, that's what it, well, that's simple. Instead of calling it Alioto Haynes and Jeremiah, you can just call it a lot of Haynes and Jeremiah. I think that would work pretty good. So, you know. So, uh, Skip Haynes and uh, maybe the whole group wrote a song about this fellow named Eddie Balchowski. Who Ken is going to refer to today. So I just wanted to give you little description about him. Actually, well, let me read this. This is, this is, came from Wikipedia. Um, and, and by the, okay, so Eddie Belchowski was an American poet, artist, musician, concert pianist, composer, philosopher, who served as a volunteer fighting fascism and the Abraham Lincoln Brigade during the Spanish Civil War. Although he lost an arm in Spain, Belchowski was able to become an important figure in the Chicago art scene, and many well-known singer-songwriters, including Skip Haynes, were inspired by the life of Eddie Belchowski and wrote songs about him, like Jimmy Buffett, Loudon Wainwright, Utah Phillips, and Dion of Dion in the Belmonts. Now, of course, The Quiet Night was on Belmont. 
No, uh, yeah, no so coincidence. The, the caretaker of the quiet night, Eddie was the caretaker of the quiet night on Belmont, where he lived and eventually died. Let me just go over here for a second, show you a picture. Give me a second. He eventually, he eventually died. Slipping off the Belmont L stop for the L train. So we have a few Belmonts in there. Not that I'm interested in synchronicities. <laughs> and many of us like to imagine that, that, this, that this is Eddie. Anyway, back to, the, back to the story couch. Back over here. Oh, she loves it. That, she loves that painting. Back to the story couch. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so now I'm going to introduce to you another one of my favorite personalities of all timelessness. He was the first person in Chicago, I believe, to have a full concert PA company, sound company, called Pan PA. He built the speakers, him, speaker cabinets himself, because he realized how much they, the cabinets affected the sound. We're talking about Ken Gores. Yeah, Ken Gores, who is coming up any minute. So, and he's going to tell you a story. So, Kenny toured with Siegel Schwal since the early 70s, and we have journeyed together, journeyed together since then. I appointed him to be sound designer for Chamber Blues Tours. And he liberated a special system for us way before I ever hired the musicians. And that was smart. Because if you think about it, when you go to a concert, it could be an amazing concert on stage. But if the sound is bad, it's a bad concert. If the sound is great and the band on stage isn't so great, but the sound is beautiful, it's a beautiful concert. We take the sound with us when we go. So, um, you know, we can practice our, our instruments and make sure we have really beautiful sound and everything. But then we're vul vulnerable to the acoustics of the room. Or if we're using sound equipment, we're vulnerable to the sound equipment. So the sound, whether it's just acoustics or electronics, it is more essential than anything. So that's why I hired Ken before I even got to hire the group. He's an intensely serious and sincere, but always on the verge of a laughing jig. I don't know anyone more devoted to honoring of and nurturing of a phenomenon called sound. He sees it, the way I imagine this is he sees it floating and fluting around in the air. He sees it tickling and caressing and embracing and erasing and nurturing. He's only interested in the equipment and the technology because it helps enhance the sonic experience. And when the equipment and technology actually gets in the way, which it often does, and he'll, we'll have stories and other streams about that, he will invent a way around it. Maybe a pillow. Maybe a piece of duct tape, or a mind-bending techno-blasto invention with complexity of the unfathomable kind. To attest to this, the Rolling Stones used as cables. Warner Brothers used as speakers. Mastering geniuses go to him so he can squeeze even more sound out of their studios. And everywhere we went with Chamber Blues and Ken, the skeptical house technicians who, who never ran into anyone with the enthusiasm and care and focus on the details quite like Ken, would admit that this was the best sound they ever heard in the venue. This happened over and over again. He has also been the post-production genius behind the amazing audiophile sound quality of our recordings and is working on the next two albums. And these next two albums, which I hope that our friend... Lynn. Who? Jordan. Lynn Jordan, that's right, will be a guest artist on the album. She was a 
is a hot-blooded woman Sending chills up and down his spine Now she's got him Crying in his wine It don't impress me Don't impress me none will share his most mind-shifting perspectives and secrets in a forthcoming stream. But for this stream, I want you to meet his joyful recollections as he tells two of, a f two of his favorite stories that arose from his travels with Siegel Schwal. Meet Ken Gores. Ready? I just wanted to introduce you to me. <laughs> my, one of my favorite stories. We're in Milwaukee in a cow palace. And Siegel Schwal is opening for Black Oak, Arkansas. And the promoter was Charlie. I don't even know Charlie's Char last Charlie name. Charlie Fane, he was Steve Miller's manager. And so the road crew from Black Oak, Arkansas. Oh, and Corky had started playing a grand piano by this time instead of the Honer Pianet. So it's a cow palace. The promoter had to rent a piano a Steinway, and the road crew for Black Oak, Arkansas comes up to me and says, oh, it's too much bother to put the piano on stage, so we, we don't want to do that. I'm going to interject something. The crew from Black Oak, Arkansas was very mean and disrespectful to Kenny, like the whole time, all during the setup. And my intention is always to be very protective of the members of the group and Kenny. So I go over and I tell Corky that they don't want to put the piano on the stage. So Corky goes over and tells Charlie that road crew for Black Oak Arkansas doesn't want to put the piano on the stage. So Charlie, this is how I remember it. And Charlie already approved what I had planned, so he was in on it. Charlie goes over to them and says, you know that check I've got for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you right after I see the piano on the stage. <laughs> so they put the piano on the stage and then they have this whole thing planned out. Corky goes over to the piano, plays an E. Schwal tunes his guitar, and then you play all harmonica songs. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> My other favorite story is an Eddie Belchowski story. <laughs> so, Single Shawl was on Wooden Nickel, which was a subsidiary of RCA. And in the contract, it stipulated 
that the band had no control over artwork. So when they did the album 953 West, which is the address of the quiet night where they played every Tuesday for four years, the janitor at the quiet night was Eddie Belchowski. And I, I'm going to say in all my life I've I've met a character or two. Eddie is on the top of the list. <laughs> Eddie had one arm. Uh, had been a concert pianist. Came back, was a junkie. The Eddie Bolchowski stories could go on and on. So, but but Eddie did a drawing of the quiet night. So Corky went and met with the art director at RCA and said, "I know, I, I uh, don't have any right, but I'm going to ask. Could this be?" the cover of the album. It, it's a drawing of the building that the album is named after. And the art director says, that's horrible. That's a horrible drawing. I could do better with my right arm tied behind my back. Mm -hmm. And he takes some block letters, 953 West, and says, it crops the picture indiscriminately says it's horrible. So Corky takes it home and lays it out and writes 953 West in the or has Holly do it, I don't know which, and in the style of the drawing and brings it back and asks, could it be the album cover? And finally they agree to it. Now months go by before there was a record release party. My memory is three or four months. And the record release party, uh, fittingly, is at The Quiet Night at 9.53 West. And Corky's talking to the art director. And they're talking for a bit, and then Corky sees Eddie. He goes, Oh, oh, there's a friend of mine, Eddie. Hey, hey, Eddie, come over. There's someone I'd like you to meet. Well, Eddie's style, Eddie, when you would meet him, he would stick out his stump. We had known that when Eddie greeted people, he always greeted them, even new people, by putting his stump in their sternum, grabbing their back and going like that. That's how he greeted people. The, the second thing is that I, I didn't say, oh, there's Eddie. I went to the art director who was at the party, and I says, you know, remember you said you could do better than this artist with one hand tied behind your back? I'd like you to meet him. <laughs> the point of the story is, Corky has no problem whatsoever waiting three or four months to deliver the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's Ken. We'll hear more from Ken. He's got some amazing stories that actually have to do with sound and do, doing live sound on stage and recording sound, some perspectives that you may have never heard before, just beautiful things. But... Uh, before I do my last song, and, I, and I'm recycling some of these things because, I, as some of you know, I, I was doing some cover tunes when I realized, no, 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 you can't do a cover tune without getting permission to do it. I was so exuberant mm -hmm. about doing these live streams and offering them to everyone. Oh, okay, when I, when, I'm, I'm going to do like 40, 50 of my original tunes, but 
you know, I want to honor the, the some of the other artists, and I'm going to do some of their songs. Sorry, especially it's one thing if you if you stream it and it's live, but once you press the save button, you've just made a video recording. And when I did um, the Italian Shuffle on on this last record. I had Sam sing on the Italian Shuffle and anything he wanted, and he sang Flip Flop and Fly. Well, I wasn't thinking that that is a copyrighted thing, so I wanted to make sure that all the artists, you know, whether they're songwriters or whatever, get paid when they do a project of mine. So I, I, I found that they were with uh, their publishing company, is Warner Chapel. I called Warner Chapel and I said, I got this video where this blues musician friend of mine, Sam Lay, is singing Flip Flop and Fly, sort of in the middle of the piece. Uh, I'd like to make sure the artists get paid. What, what would you like? And they said $5,000, and you could only use it for one year. I said, yeah, but this is just going to go up on YouTube. It's not a film. I'm not a corporation, and um, it's just going to be on YouTube, and I don't have that many followers on YouTube, and I, could I pay you per view? $5,000 anyway. That's a long story. So you don't want to mess around with videotaping someone else's song. Okay? <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> so I, I, I couldn't use it. Okay. So I, I just want to mention that Greg Gibbs is watching. So Oh yeah. Okay. So Greg, I hope you're still watching because we are going to do a major stream about the amazing story about Greg, Greg Gibbs, Eddie Bolchowski, Dr. L. Subramaniam, Ernie Watts, your wife, <laughs> the hair salon, the, all these incredible things coming together in synchronicities about the quiet night. It's an amazing story. I need to spend some time working on it. If you have anything you want to add, you know, or any ideas, let me know, but that's going to be a major story. So that's Greg Gibbs. He's here the Chicago Bagel Authority. Amazing bagels. And, Best sandwiches in the and world. And Dahlia has an amazing hair salon, Milo's, right? Is that the right pronunciation? And it's a long story of how they met. It all involves a quiet night. It's just unbelievable story. I've been waiting to tell this story a long time, Greg, but I just have to make sure I do it the right way.
Thank you all. We love you. Stay healthy. Stay home. Wear your mask. Do everything you need to do. Bye-bye.